So I decided to dye two halves of the same fabric um, so that they would match in fabric type. So I used the RIT dye and just followed the instructions on the bottle. With this, you want to make sure that you're using utensils and a pot that you don't plan to use for food because you definitely don't want to be eating this stuff. When it came to the step where you pour it out, I used tongs because this is boiling water. You don't want to burn yourself. So here we have all the strips of fabric once they're all dried and cut out. I sewed each stripe to its opposite color one by one until I got the length of stocking that I needed. And instead of doing the two stockings separately, I sewed them all together as one big stocking and then I cut it in half later. This just made it easier and streamlined the sewing process. Here's my cat helping. Now at this step, I cut the fabric in half uh, so that it would create two stockings and then I sewed the sides together to just have one seam on the stocking so that it looked like it went most of the way around my leg. Here's serging it so that there's some extra stretch. sewing down the top seam, finish them off. I did end up sewing these two dance tights for the actual event so that they stayed up on my leg. And here they are. So for this step, I used the Simplicity New Look pattern you see here in view D. It matched a lot of her blue stripes on her top, um, so I didn't have to do much modification to this part. So here are the mock-up pieces after I drew out and made a fake mock-up to exactly position them on myself. Here I'm just pulling them apart and I will use these as the actual pattern pieces since they have the stripes and whatnot already in them. So here I'm just cutting each piece out of its respective fabric. I did end up labeling um, each pattern piece with its respective color since stocking has blue, white, and silver on her top and I didn't want to accidentally cut out a part of the wrong color fabric. Some parts I did forget to add seam allowance, so here when you see me cutting widely around parts, that's just the extra 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance that I would need to sew it together to make it all fit. just sewing all the pieces together. This specifically that you're seeing on video right now um, is the straps.
After the sides have been sewn together, you're going to want to flip it right side out like a pillowcase. I, since this part is so narrow, I usually use a paintbrush or a small pencil or a skewer even to help the process along. Now we are just going to iron this flat and then I also sewed down the sides to help it lay even more flat than it was. This entire part of working on the top was uh, disrupted by my cat, as you can see. No footage here usable. This is just more of assembling the top in the way that the pattern itself instructs. Uh, this just takes a few extra steps because I have color blocking uh, that I modified into the pattern myself to match stockings. And here we begin to sew everything together. Here I'm just using my serger for some extra stability. And here's the mostly assembled top portion of the top. So we're just going to do the same thing, just sew over the appropriate seam areas and then go over them with the serger. Now this is the stomacher part of stockings top, so instead of doing a corseted top on the front, um, I just made it a little bit more simple and sewed ribbon down to this front portion to mimic a corseted look. Um, honestly, I was just trying to keep this cosplay a little bit under budget, so didn't really want to purchase any more grommets. <laughs> and that's just honestly the truth there. Now here I'm sandwiching lace in between the seams, so you'll see me putting it in between the stomacher part and the next side seam. So we're just going to do it in a way where the seam will cover up most of the band part of the lace so that all that sticks out are the little fluffy parts of the lace. And here I'm just sewing the lace down so that it lays flat in the correct direction. And here's the mostly finished top. Now I just need to do the back and add the straps. I almost forgot what they were called. And 
Here's the back portion of the top. There is not much to it. Uh, canonically in the anime, uh, stocking the back of her top is just white. So just basically followed the pattern here with almost no modification. And then the back of the bottom portion of the top likewise is just silver. So again, just followed the regular pattern. Here I'm just sewing some boning into the lining. I created the lining in the same way as the top, but I just used some blue lining fabric that I already had laying around the house. And here we are painstakingly and carefully installing the boning using the sewing machine. And here is the finished lining uh, being attached to the finished top. So from here, um, because all the color blocking parts are done, we're just going to install the lining in the same way that the pattern instructs. Here we're just sandwiching some lace between the bottom parts of the lining and the bodice itself. And we're just going to sew it together with a regular seam allowance and then when we flip it right side out we'll have a cute little lace border along the bottom. We're just sewing the sides together in preparation to add an invisible zipper. The skirt, I just drew out a regular circle skirt pattern and marked off where I needed the separate parts to be since there is a big blue portion in the middle. But her skirt isn't layered, it's more like just a stripe. So I decided to make it as separate parts and have a seam at those parts. And here I am labeling them to make sure I cut out the correct parts and here are the fold lines. Here I am cutting it out of the actual fabric. This is exactly where the labels for which color came in handy. Here I am pinning each portion together. Here I am sewing it. It is a little puckered, but it works. Now we're serging the bottom parts of the skirt as well as the top. And we're adding horsehair braid. This is a very, very quick job, so it's, again, not the most clean sewing work, but it gave the skirt a cute little puff in the end. Now Stocking has a lot of cute little lace details along the bottom side of her petticoat, so I did sew 
some extra lace and some extra tulle onto a pre-bought petticoat from a Halloween store. Now this was definitely a chore to sew down, but it looked really cute in the end and gave a really good effect. Now the bows, I honestly just used a Simplicity Sailor Moon style pattern. Um, and they included a bow pattern. These are actually really easy to find online if you type in how to sew a bow for a Sailor Moon cosplay. Um, so you just sew around a big rectangle, flip it right side out, add some tubing for the center, and for mine I just put some velcro on so that it was easy to stick the hearts to it. gathered the centers of the bows, and here they are. So the hearts, I forgot to film the actual painting process, but I just took some heart-shaped Valentine's Day ornaments and painted the insides with a blue glitter paint. And then to attach them to the dress, I stuffed a heart-shaped piece of foam inside and just hot glued it down added some velcro and there we go. The collar was made with two pieces of satin with some lace sandwiched in the seams. So here you see me just pinning that lace inward and then I'm gonna place that silver part of the fabric on top of it and sew along the seam and flip it right side out to create that look. The wings are just made out of two millimeter craft foam. So all I did was cut a pattern uh, out of construction paper and then just trace it onto some craft foam and that's about it. Um, I did use contact cement to adhere everything and I also went over it with some white paint to cover up the contact cement. Other than that, I uh, didn't really do much else to these. They're attached to my back with some sort of thick wire and then I just tuck that wire down into the back of my top and basically use some safety pins to put it in place. This was kind of an afterthought, so if I end up revisiting this costume, I will probably redo that portion.
Last but not least is the sword. It is just a couple of pieces of five millimeter EVA foam with a dowel sandwiched in the middle. I will have to admit, I do not like this prop at all. This was done very, very quickly. So as you can tell, the craftsmanship is not great. Um, <laughs> if you choose to go this route with the sword, definitely do it, do it better job than I did. Um, <laughs> so these are just the steps here. Lot of contact cement. Um, I even forgot to film the painting process of this. So I only have some of that, but it's just regular acrylic paint. Uh, just put some stripes on there, sprayed it with gloss enamel, and that's it. I don't have any good video and don't want YouTube to copyright strike me, so here are some TikToks I took in this cosplay with the sound muted. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this video if you watched this far, and like and subscribe if you would like to see more of my costume making shenanigans.